Picture fashion. Picture style. Picture travel. Picture food. Picture giving. Picture joy. Watch Tomorrow Pictures, powered by the Film On Network. Here I am, there you'll be, miles and miles this away is Pictures. TV. Joe from Hollywood. I'm to say hello again and start our show again and sing a song or two for all of you. Hi, everybody. How are you? I hope you feel as good as, as I do today and as, as we all do. This is a, a very kind of an extra special day because we just got in late last night from a weekend in New York. And this is something that I've heard of other people doing, and I never thought it could happen to me. And it's, it's been a very exciting and a very hectic weekend, and believe me, it's, the excitement hasn't worn off yet. Tell you, tell you a little bit more about the trip in a few minutes, but right now I have kind of a, a song that could be appropriate if I was still back there, but it isn't a bit appropriate out here. Here we go. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, hoping that you like me, getting to know you, putting it my way but nicely, you are precisely my cup of tea, getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy when I am with you getting to know what to say haven't you noticed suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you day by day Getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy. When I'm with you, getting to know what to say. Haven't you noticed, suddenly I'm bright and breezy. Because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you. In, in a couple of days, the back of my neck is so stiff from looking straight up. It, well, it's, it's just a fabulous city. I, I can't say enough about it. Very first trip back there, Frank. Oh, I'm glad you're back safe, though. Oh, and a beautiful flight both ways. Everybody says, well, the one thing you do in New York, you, you, all you do is eat. You go to restaurants all the time. Didn't do that at all. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you popped a button there. I know it. Every time I breathe, I do that. Did you see a lot of sights? I mean, did you go see the tallest building in the world, the Flatiron Building? That wasn't it. It was the Empire State Building. Is there another bigger building now in the Empire? <laughs> How long since you've been there, Frank? I think it was about 31 years. <laughs> oh, well, you'd notice a couple of changes. How the about the aquarium? Three deuces aren't there anymore. Uh, the, well, the aquarium is... is I didn't get to see it. Oh, well, two days you couldn't. I, mean, it's I took a ride in a handsome cab. I, oh, you did? Uh-huh. <laughs> How about the horse cars? Are they still running? Yes, they are. Only around Central Park, though. Oh, I see. It's uh, six dollars for an hour. That's the half hour long. <laughs> Did you see Trixie Forganza? Frank, uh, she wasn't there. Uh, Tony Pastors? She isn't there now. I don't think Tony Pastors is still there. Uh, you ought to make a trip back if you get a chance. It's changed a little bit. You'd be surprised. Well, it must have. My goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Traffic's pretty bad now. They have cabs, you know. Yeah. Oh, I've do they cab. have cabs? <laughs> Do they have meters? <laughs> <laughs> Do they, boy? And, and but I tell you one thing, funny thing that happened. We were in this cab, and and uh, we had had done the show, and then it left right after the show, mm -hmm. you know. And the cab fellow said that he saw the show that morning that we did from here, and here we were driving around <laughs> New York. Is that right? He mm -hmm. recognized you right off. Uh huh. Isn't that wonderful? Of course, I mean, the, the necklace didn't hurt anything. I have a necklace that says Betty White. It's in letters about, like, it glows in the dark. It flashes on and off, but I didn't want to be ostentatious. That's like a sandwich man, only for a television show. <laughs> That's right. 
But uh, well, where all did you eat? That's what I'm interested in hearing. What, uh, what did you oh, have? Oh, there are a lot of other things besides eating there, Frank. I can't think of them offhand. That seems to be all we oh, did. Boy, I, the food in New York is really wonderful. I, I like the vegetables that they grow in Ohio and ship to New York. And oh. I drank more California orange juice back there than I ever <laughs> It's from Florida. Man. Who was it? <laughs> it's awfully good. Who was it that said they, got, they wore dark glasses and got snow blind from all the white tablecloths? This is how I feel. I don't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Danny's hideaway. What? Danny's hideaway. Danny's hideaway? Yeah, it was awesome. What did he good. do? He hid away. Oh, I saw uh, Pajama Game. Well, no, the show? How, yeah. how was it? Was it, it was, good? Oh, not the show. <laughs> oh, not the show. Oh. oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, they have a version out here only to use nightgowns. <laughs> That's right. It's all girl orchids. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then we have, excuse me, <laughs> Oh, hello. Hi. Yeah. She was in New York. Yeah. yeah, just hearing this. I'm a commuter. You're talking about Tony Foster. I just wanted to bring him up to date. He has a band now. He only cooks oh. for his friends. Oh, I see. see. <laughs> right. did, did you eat at Henri's? No, we didn't. We didn't get a chance. No, she's a nice girl. Oh, oh this is one of uh, two Italian boys oh, oh, own a French place. Oh, yeah. No, but we ate at a, at a an Italian restaurant called El Baracho, and we did too. <laughs> did it still have the bird there that talks back at you? No. Oh, they used to have a minor bird in there. It was something. I thought that was the waiter. I could have sworn. No. <laughs> <laughs> he presents the bill. You know. <laughs> have you bought uh, your Christmas seals yet? Change the subject. No, but you know how we love animals. Or, uh, yes, no, sir. seriously, I shouldn't well, care here's about it. Uh, here's a wonderful message from Rod Cameron right now about Christmas seals. This is Rod Cameron. No, protection means many things, from the cop on the beat to the firehouse on the corner. Often it's something we take for granted, like the protection you and your family receive every day through Christmas seals. Christmas seals fight tuberculosis. Tuberculosis strikes one American every five minutes. But progress in this fight since the first Christmas seal was sold has meant the saving of more than seven million lives. Now that's real protection. Yes, we all share the benefits. Our contributions make these benefits possible. Use both the red and the green seal, the colors of Christmas. Answer your Christmas seal letter today. If you haven't received it, mail your contribution to your tuberculosis association. They'll send you your Christmas seals. Remember, your contribution is the one that counts. You know, it, it's a funny thing when you, when you come back from a place like that or a flying trip like that, especially when it was for such a little time. Now, we arrived late last night, and now it doesn't seem possible that we were ever back there. It just seems like something that, that didn't really happen. But everybody was certainly nice to us back there, and we appreciate it. Lalo, do you have what I hope you have lined up for today in the way of a song? Yes, I do. I have a little heart rendering thing. A song yeah. called Estrellita. We received more mail, I think, on that song than, than almost anyone that you've done on the program. I, I hope to do it better this time. You oh, you didn't... Oh, I see what you mean. I did Oh, I see. Well, gee, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> How are you going to handle somebody like that? Isn't that awful? And they're all like that in their own way. They're all just great big boys at heart. <laughs> Well, this is the song that was written for your mother, was it not, Eddie? Well, yes, yeah, she introduced this song. It was, it had already been written, but when Manuel Ponce, the composer, met her while he dedicated it to her, and when she came to this country, she was the first one to sing it. Well, no wonder you tie up a little on this song. I think it, it certainly has a, a lot of meaning, as well as being a perfectly beautiful song. Eddie Robertson and Estrellita. <laughs> Estreita de lejano cielo que miras mi dolor que sabes mi sufrir baja y dime si me quieres Oh, 
cara de amor Tú sabes que pronto He de morir Baja y dime Si me quiere un poco Porque yo no Estrella, mi faro de amor. Tú sabes que pronto he de morir. Ay, dime, si me Wonderful mail. Incidentally, we have two ladies in our audience today who are the daughters of R.L. Murdy in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, who watches this show, and we just want him to know that his, his gals are here in the audience, and we're very, very happy to have them here, and we appreciate you watching the program in Canada, too. Then from Katona, New York, we have uh, an excerpt that was out of somebody's scrapbook here. We just signed a viewer, so we didn't get a chance to... to mention their names, but these are some extracts from letters making application for supplies of welfare milk in the Glasgow area of Scotland. The first one is, I have a baby 12 months old, thanking you for same. Please send the form for supply of milk for having babies at reduced rates. And the other one says, I posted the form by mistake before my child was properly filled. And the third one, will you please send me a form for cheap milk? I have a baby two months old. I didn't know anything about it until a friend told me. <laughs> and then, sorry I have been so long in filling in form, but I have been in bed with my baby and didn't know it was running out until the milkman told me. <laughs> and this is my eighth child. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> That's from the Milk Industry News. I love those letters that are written in sometimes. It's the reason I love them most is I've written some of them. Since writing, have found the handle in the box. <laughs> then we also have a perfectly beautiful one here. How much time do we have, Jack? About one minute, I can just about do this in one minute. This was uh, sent in, a great many interesting things are happening in Korea all the time, but the most intriguing story I have heard recently is this. This is from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. It was Christmas time with plenty of snow and cold outside. The chapel was decorated with a crib in which figures of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were displayed. A little Korean boy, numbed by the biting wind, entered the edifice to get warm. Attracted by the crib, he walked up and saw the Christ child. Remembering the stories the G.I.s told him about Christmas and the birth of Jesus, he stood there in admiration. He wanted to pay his respects, but knowing no Christmas carols, he began singing, You Are My Sunshine. Not once, but three times he gave the number, once for Jesus, once for Mary, and once for Joseph. Then looking at the crib, he added this greeting, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Savior, happy birthday to you. I believe this was one of the most beautiful, wonderful gifts offered to the baby Bethlehem on his birthday. That's a beautiful story, and thank you so much whoever sent that in, too. It's fun to share not only the little funny ones and the little goodies, but also the, the heartwarming ones as well. She says, I consider sheep the stupidest of animals. Don't you agree, darling? He says, yes, my lamb. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, speaking of animals, you know they have more pigeons in New York than they do. I mean, the, the flying kind than they do any place else. <laughs> really and truly. Then you buy a bag of peanuts and you have nine million pigeons. Oh, we'll be back with the second half of our show in just a minute. Right now, station identification. The second half of the Betty White Show from Hollywood. 
You know, some songs sort of make the rounds. They come around just every so often. And others just never really go away. I guess this one sort of falls into the latter category because you hear it just every so often. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm and maybe I'm strong. But nevertheless, I'm in love. Maybe I'm in for crying Nevertheless, I'm in love with you Somehow I knew at a glance The terrible chances I'm taking Fine at the start Then left with a heart that is great Maybe I'll give much more than I'll get. Nevertheless, I'm in love with you. Somehow I knew at a glance the terrible chances I'm taking. Fine at the start. Here's some news from NBC that will interest you. When Hope was a lad, he trod the stage in the comedy foil. He was the rage. He told some jokes and mucked so good. Soon he went to Hollywood. Soon he went to Hollywood. But fate took a hold of him, you see. And now you see his show on NBC. So the 7th of December is the date to know. The 7th of December is the date of the show. The 7th of December is the date of the show. Hope's not alone, it is fun that night Cause Millie and Chevalier will be in sight To keep you laughing and roaring in glee On this very same channel called NBC Very same channel called NBC A lily named Bee and her great comedy With Maurice from France to sing me me Heads up to a trio you'll have to see On Tuesday the 7th on NBC Tuesday the 7th on NBC NBC Something we've been wanting to do. We've been wanting to remind you that today is Wish Day, which kind of makes every every Monday kind of special for us because we get a chance to to. Well, over the weekend I was sort of spending a little bit of my time wishing I was back home again. Not that I mean anything against New York. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time. But even in two days, you can get a little bit homesick for certain things. Right now we have a gentleman we'd like to have you meet. He's a he's a guest on our program today, and we'd like to have you meet him right now, Mr. Ralph Richardson. Money, you Mr. Richardson? Hi, how are you? How old are you, Ralph? Ten. Is it all right if I call you Ralph? Mm-hmm. Is it okay? Will you call me Betty? Well, you know what What I've been kind of wishing for today? I've been kind of wishing that a fellow would come on and, and sing a Christmas song. You know, we haven't had any, any Christmas songs at all on the program. Mm. Do you like Christmas songs? Sometimes. I understand you make up a lot of your own songs, don't you, Ralph? Well, at, when I'm at home, I do. Have you ever sung on television before? Mm-mm. Well, it's very special for you to come on over here and sing for us. We really appreciate it. I hope you know that. What do you like to do, mostly? Mm-hmm. Have any favorite games you like to play? Mm-mm. You have Not any favorite baseball leagues? What position do you play? I play. I play in the. I tag up for. What do you do? Tag up and Ann Holler, which particular position you want to play that day? And whoever gets there first, I guess, gets to pitch, isn't it? Mm-mm. It's to be up first. 
Oh, you'd rather have your ups, of course. I forgot. How about television? You ever watch television? Very light. Do I care? What's your favorite program? Space Patrol. Do you like space things in this? Ralph, you weren't the fellow I heard that that uh, saw a flying saucer, were you? Mm-hmm. When was it? That's true, too. I'd like to hear about it. I'm very interested in it. Where did you see it? When I was living over where I used to live in Los Angeles. Well, what did it look like? Just round and white. Round and white? I heard it the next day. I heard it carrying the uh, paper. Not the paper, but it's this book where the Navy Marine saw him, too. Were you scared? Well, I should have been scared. Well, that's the best answer I've ever heard. I'll buy that answer right this minute. Why should you be scared? Maybe somebody's trying to get acquainted with us. You can't tell. You shouldn't be scared of that, should you? Uh-uh. Oh, I like that. That'll stop me and my silly questions. What else do you like to do? What do you want to be when you grow up, Ralph? Well, I might be a writer or a singer. A writer or a singer? Well, maybe you could be both. A lot of times you can do that, can't you? Maybe right yeah, but I'll ha- I would have to concentrate when I, when I couldn't concentrate on both things. No, I guess to do anything well, you have to put your whole heart and soul into that just that one thing, I don't know. you? Which do you enjoy doing the most? Well, singing to the boys when I go to bed. What kind of songs do you sing? To just make them up. Just any kind? Do you just pick a subject or do you just, just start singing and see what happens? I could do both. Both of them? What is your favorite song of all the songs you've ever sung? Well, I don't remember the songs. I just, I just make them up and forget them. <laughs> That's the best way. You ought to write them down. I wish you'd sing us a Christmas song, though, today. That's, that's one of the reasons. We also wanted to have to get a chance to get acquainted with you, but we thought it'd be awfully nice to have our very first Christmas song on the program sung by you. Would you, would you step up here and sing one for us? Mm-hmm. Ralph Ritchie. Mm-hmm. And I know fellas don't like to have a girl put her arm around them. I forget sometimes, you know. But you know something else? You know what these are? These are magic stairs around here. And when you stand on these, even when it's to sing a beautiful song like that, all of a sudden you find yourself starting to have all sorts of things happen. And if you close your eyes, you might start to try to wish and see what happens. Let's try it. Well, something happens. You want to take a look? You like cake? Do you? Okay. Well, so I hope this is one of the times because it says, Happy Wish Day to Ralph, and it's a real snow scene and everything. Will you take that back at Boys and Girls Aid in Aldavina and share it with your friends? Frank, what do we have here? Well, Ralph, here's a complete Gilbert chemistry set, fun with nuclear physics. I hope you have a good time with it, Ralph. <laughs> and Bill? Here's a high-powered hunting rifle for you, a real scope on it, too. Happy Wish Day. Happy wish day, Ralph. Here's a fire engine, and the, the ladder goes up and down. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. I think I'll sit it here on the floor. Eddie Robertson? Hi, Ralph. Gee, I suppose you've heard of King Arthur's Court. Well, I have all of the equipment here you can play Sir Lancelot in. Thanks. It's a swinging sword there, too. Happy wish day, Ralph. And Dick? Hi, Ralph. Happy wish day. Here's a walkie-talkie set for you. You have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. How about you, Rock? Ralph, we'd like you to have this fine leather craft hobby set. Think you can make something out of that? Yes, I'll bet you can, too. That's right. Happy wish, Dad. Lots of things. Good evening, Ralph. Your mother, Chevy Wadden, or Jenny. Oh, who? Good morning, Ralph. 
on pants. <laughs> what did he say? I... <laughs> Ralph, we wander around here sometimes ourselves. We just smile and nod. Cliff? Ralph, maybe you can understand this. This is a Rebel construction kit. You can build four giant airplanes out of this. Oh, Happy you. wish day. And Del Sharbet? See, Ralph, have you ever seen 3D pictures? Well, you'll have your own with this Viewmaster, and oh, looky, you've got all kinds of reels of day at the circus, cowboy stars, and you've got everything here. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Del. You want me to hold this boy up for them over there? And all not right. only that, but you know, we don't want you to go on back home and not have some gifts for your friends. So we have some gifts over there for all your friends, if you'll take them back and pass them out for us. Will you do that? And we have also a complete set of the Book of Knowledge, a 20-volume set. That's the world's uh, famous encyclopedia for children, famous the world over. And if, you, if you'll take that back home, there's also another complete 20-volume set of the Book of Knowledge sending your name to the Home for Friendless Children in, in Newport, Rhode Island. Is that all right? Okay. And not only that, but we understand that you boys and girls over there are trying to establish your own newspaper. Well, thanks to Ditto Incorporated, that's going to be possible because they're seeing to it that the home gets a... a a ditto liquid duplicator, so you can make as many copies of your newspaper as you possibly want to. Will that be all right? Mm-hmm. All right. And I think it's, it's pretty exciting, and I also think for a fellow whose favorite program is Space Patrol, I think you ought to meet Cadet Happy, don't you? Sure. Lynn, come on in here. Hi, Ralph. Glad to see you. Okay. Uh, Commander Corey, uh, give me a few things to bring you through for you. Yeah. Oh, thank There's you. an official Space Patrol flashlight and a watch for you. Watch? And uh, a watch. A couple of records that the uh, deck of maid tells the whole story of how I got to belong to the Space Patrol. Mm, and a space helmet, too, no less. <laughs> yeah. Oh, smoking rockets. <laughs> <laughs> thank you ever so sure. much, Cadet Happy. Can you do that? Uh, and yeah. not only that, but the telefilm company is also going to see to it that you have actual motion pictures to show every week over at the home. Will that be all right? Hmm? I, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Happy wish day to you. Happy wish day to you. Happy wish day, dear Val. Happy wish day to you. And your big wish, a roll fast bicycle. Okay? What do you, I say okay? Thank you. Are you receiving me in there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we certainly hope that, that you're, you're happy with these things, and we hope you'll kind of pass them out to your friends back home. Will you, Ralph? Is it all right for him to take the helmet off? I mean, is well, he... Well, uh, you might not be able to breathe, but... Uh, Are you all right here? Right. This rarefied atmosphere, Lynn Osborne, thank you so much for My coming over here. How do you turn this off? Well, you'll have to ask ha Cadet you Happy just, about uh, that. Push the little gimme. Uh, I think, yeah, okay. I don't know how to turn it off. But one, it's on. one quick question, Cadet Happy, before you leave. Uh, uh -huh. I understand we have a gentleman here who has actually seen a flying saucer. Is there anything he does particular about that? I mean, does he report it to anybody or anything? Uh, well, he might check with Commander Corey. He's got uh, complete records on all that. And, uh, oh. Actually, that's the flying saucers are really the space patrol. Uh, oh, I see. Out on personal appearance. Thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you again. And thanks to you, Ralph, so much for coming over here. This is a real treat for us today. I hope you know that. It's a real treat for me, too. Oh, well, will you come on back and see us and let us know how you make out? Yes, yes I can. Time to sing that song again And say so long again Until we say hello on our next show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. This is Del Sharman speaking for the Betty White Show from Hollywood. This is Tomorrow Pictures dot TV. It goes beyond friendship, it goes beyond musical interest, it's, it's, it's a soul connection that is as deep as, as family. It is family to me. Watch Tomorrow Pictures, powered by the Film On Network.